Good evening, Democrats. Welcome to the June 4th um, meeting of the Lowndes County Democratic Party. I'm expecting more people to come, but everyone is very busy. So thank you for making time uh, in your busy schedule to join us this evening. If you would uh, join with me in a moment of silence um, while we respect those who serve our country so bravely and those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you, and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, when you came in, you got a packet of materials. I hope you picked up one of each thing on the table. Um, and in that packet was uh, the minutes from the last meeting. So the minutes from the May meeting are on the table or in your hand. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Our treasurer is at work this evening, but he has left me a financial report. At the end of April, we had $947.60. Uh, at the end of May, we had $6,780.65. Thank you very much, candidates, um, because when we qualify candidates, we get to keep part of the money that you qualify with. So that's a fundamental part of the process, is that the parties get to benefit from your willingness to serve, and, and we really appreciate that. Um, so... We have a big fundraiser coming up. Also in that packet, you got a, a barbecue sign-up sheet. Um, the barbecue will be on Thursday, July the 5th. Um, we'll have not just our own candidates, but we'll have candidates uh, from Public Service Commission um, from the 1st Congressional District. Part of our county is still in the 1st Congressional District, and the candidates um, for the 1st Congressional District that are Democrats will be um, joining us. Uh, so mark your calendars now for July the 5th of the barbecue. We'll be at Knights of Columbus. The bulk of our meeting this evening is to hear from our candidates. Um, it's my preference to take them in the order that they're on the ballot, but they're not all here yet. So we're going to take them in a somewhat uh, more random uh, order. Uh, but J.C. Cunningham has just come in, and he's... He's going to be pretty near the top. JC, are you ready to talk to us yet, or do you want a moment to collect yourself? <laughs> okay. JC Cunningham is our, our candidate in House District 175. That's the House District that Amy Carter currently serves. It's Lowndes County, Brooks County, Thomas County. Um, and we are thrilled to have JC be our candidate. JC. Let me turn this. When I started this, I never had a, a phone like this before, so they had to make me get a real phone, and I don't know how to turn it down. So, good afternoon. I am, this is my, what, fifth time in a row speaking, so I, I'm probably going to be saying the same thing. But you know what I wanted to do tonight? Um, I think we're ready. I think we know that if we don't get out and really push the vote, and push the party that we're going to be in trouble. Uh, there's a lot of apathy out in uh, not just Lowndes County, but Thomas County, Brooks County, the, uh, the South in general. So, uh, you know, I declared, uh, and I did my DOI in um, February. So I've been campaigning since February, and I do this 24 hours a day, and uh, this is what I do. I'm in Brooks County today. I was in Brooks County for about five hours, and I'm in Thomasville every day. And the overwhelming thing that I'm seeing throughout the area is that People don't understand the issues. And I think that's why most people don't come out and vote, because they really don't understand the issues. Uh, people are still telling us they don't understand what the t splost is about. They're still telling us they don't know anything about uh, uh, 
the charter school bill, and these are things that we're going to be voting for. Uh, so, you know, for the past three and a half months, that's all I've been doing is just educating. I haven't been talking about my opponent. I've been just talking about the fact that we have got to give folks uh, their voice back in South Georgia. Uh, and we don't have the voice that we need. So until we start educating folks and letting folks really understand the issues that are out there, we're, we're behind a lot of other people. But what today I wanted to do, since we're all Democrats and we all know what we're doing, uh, what I thought I would do, because I've talked to two folks that are, are, are just decided they're going to run, and one person told me where they were going to get their bumper stickers, and another person told me where they were going to get their T-shirts. And again, like I said, I've been doing this since February, and I did this for consolidation about five months ago. And so uh, I tell you, I've been trying to just, I thought out today what I would do is just tell you about some things I found out. Um, let's talk about T-shirts. I want to show off my T-shirt here. Here's my T-shirt. It's $5 a T-shirt. So if you're looking at T-shirts and you're paying anything more than $5, then, then I'm not trying to give anybody any shameless plugs, but I am in a way also. Uh, I got this at Greek Row for $100, for $5 a shirt. That's if you buy one shirt or if you buy 100 shirts. If you buy 100, they're a little less. That's the cheapest I found in, in Lowndes County for the quality shirt. This is Lowndes County, Brooks County. And I think I also checked in uh, Ware County as well. So this is the cheapest shirt I could find. Um, pins, I also got from Greek Row. I got these for 36 cent a pin. And that's multicolor. Same with the shirts, by the way. And uh, I didn't bring my yard signs. I had them last uh, time. But yard signs uh, that I saw was the cheapest so far is um, U.S. Press. And I, I bought yard signs for $3.00 and 46 cent. And my yard signs has like four colors on it. it has all this, these colors plus another color as well. So I just thought I'd throw that little tip in there if you're out looking for, for certain things. Oh, and I bought bumper stickers. They won't be ready till Friday, but my bumper stickers, this is my second batch. I bought my first batch from another place before I found the cheaper one. And I bought bumper stickers for 49 cent. And I bought those at Greek Row also. Now you can get bumper stickers cheaper if you go online but I thought we need to try to patronize our folks here in, in Lowndes County, so that's what we're doing, okay? But as far as T-shirts and everything else, uh, it's not. Now, I, I think I only have about a minute left, so this is what I want to say as far as this election goes. We're all Democrats, and, uh, you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of uh, to, to let folks know that you are a Democrat. There are values the Democrat Party has to offer that the other two parties can't offer. But, but we're doing ourselves and we're doing the party and the folks that we represent a disservice if we just go out and ask for their vote. If we're not educating the folks on what we are about, what South Georgians are missing out on, and if we do not educate folks on why lines are drawn the way they're drawn, not just in the county and in the city and the state, but we're talking about our school board lines. We're talking about uh, our commission lines. Then we're doing ourselves a disservice. We, 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 we do not and we should not take any vote or any voters uh, for, for granted. Uh, asking for a vote is wrong. We need to let folks know why they're coming out to vote. And once we do that, they will come out and vote. But they need to know why they're coming out to vote. They need to know the issues that are important to them. And we des they deserve, they deserve it. We don't, they don't need to just see us in November, I mean October and November. We have to all of June, all of July, all of August, because we're all going to make it through the primaries, okay? Well, everyone in this room is going to make it through the primaries. Claim it, and it's yours. But during this time, we must educate, okay? Good night, and I'll let everybody who hasn't had a chance to speak, speak. Thank you. Just walked in the door. Thank you. Thank you, JC. Um, I, I'm a Democrat, and I'm proud of it, and people ask me why am I a Democrat, and, and I tell them why. Um, because of great people like you who stick up for middle-class folks like me. Uh, Teresa Lawrence has stepped up. She's a mom, um, and she's going to run against Alice Black in 174, which includes Lowndes, Eccles, Clinch, Charlton, uh, and Camden County. So she's got a big territory. Um, welcome, Teresa Lawrence. Ready? 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 
Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Teresa Lawrence, and many of you have probably never heard of me because I'm new to this whole political arena. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself and how I've gotten to be standing here today. I was born and raised in uh, Fairfield County, Connecticut by my parents, Frank and Rosa Palumbo. And I grew up and went to school surrounded by a lot of people with a lot of money and uh, in their own minds, the superiority of, for, of over everyone else. Something that I really never bought into. Uh, my family was never well off like my friends were, but we had what we needed. When I graduated high school, regretfully, I didn't immediately go into college. I thought I was going to go out into the world and get a job and make it on my own. And as we all find out when we go and do that, it's a little bit harder, not always as easy as it seems. Um, after a few jobs in the airline industry and restaurant and retail businesses, a few moves up and down the East Coast, and a couple of husbands, I find myself here in Lowndes County, Georgia. I moved here five years ago with my daughter, Danielle, to be closer to my best girlfriend from high school. Since moving to Lowndes County, I met my wonderfully supportive husband, Christopher Lawrence, and we've added three beautiful boys to our family, Jacob, AJ, and Alex. I've gone back to college with a vengeance, and I'm proud to say that I made the dean's list this semester. Thank you. <laughs> uh, last fall, the Occupy movement, as you all know, started in Zuccotti Park in New York City, and I started to take notice of the things going on around me in politics and policies that the politicians made. And I began to realize that they didn't always seem to have my best interest in mind. I like to think of myself as a fairly average citizen, and if I didn't think things were right or fair, then lots of other people must not as well. At the Cinco de Mayo Festival this year, uh, Gretchen Quarterman came up to me and asked me if I had ever thought about running, and I laughed and said no, I'd never thought about it. And in my head, I was looking over my shoulder wondering who she was talking to because I was not a politician. Um, I told her I would talk it over with my husband and get back to her, and I went home and thought about it and realized that maybe that was exactly why I needed to do this, because I'm not a politician. I'm just an average person with some extraordinary courage. I feel that some of the most important issues currently facing South Georgians are the travesty that has been made out of the HOPE Scholarship Program. There definitely needs to be a cap put back on it so it can return to its original intent of helping those for whom the cost of education is soaring out of control. I think that the cuts made to the pre-K -pre program need to be reevaluated. Cutting teacher salaries, shortening the school year, and increasing class size are not the way to achieve Governor Deal's wish of having all third graders reading at a third grade level. I think that our treatment of immigrants who are here and working in our agricultural industry needs to be one of finding a way to help them on the path to either citizenship or some kind of work visa, not the attitude that we just need to toss them aside like rubbish. I don't know when trying to better yourself or your family has become a crime. And finally, I think that the government needs to leave the medical issues of women to be between her and her doctor. <laughs> The legislature needs to stop trying to regulate the how the medical profession should be treating women's bodies. I hope that I've given you some insight as to about me and as what I stand for. I've always felt that your elected officials are supposed to represent the people who elected them, and I hope that that's what I'm able to do. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. I really do appreciate it. I also appreciate advice and donations. And um, I just like to say, if not me here and now, then who, where, and when. So, thank you. Thank you, Teresa. It, it's really uh, a privilege for me to know that our county has fielded candidates against our turncoats. Um, one of the things that we ended up with was uh, a new seat, uh, an empty seat, uh, and, and Dexter Sharper is running for House Seat 177. So Dexter, come tell us about yourself. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Dexter Sharper. I serve the city council and also mayor pro tem here in the city of Valdosta. And I'm very excited about being the qualified candidate for this upcoming 177 district. And um, I feel real good about what we can actually do. Uh, like they said earlier, uh, JC and others of us working together uh, as a team and unifying our, our goals in order to get us where we need to be. Um, a lot of times we have a lot of the state candidates or the state legislators say that they want to work with the locals, meaning uh, your city council, county commissioners, and that type thing. But 
some of that doesn't get done like it should. A lot of this stuff is voted on in Atlanta, and a lot of the issues doesn't reach our ground root problems. And I think that our state legislators has a lot of influence on what happens at a local level, but the people, that, they, don't, they don't get it. They don't get the help. So some of my issues, uh, if you read the newspaper a little bit, it was talking about more programs helping the elderly um, with whatever funding and programs that's available. Um, agriculture and immigrant issues are important, but however, the things that we need for our youth and our elderly are not really being taken care of. So a lot of times you see your lay people, they really try to throw darts at your local people for things that your state people could actually help them with and they're not getting help with it. So that's why I want to be the voice of the people and I want to be that liaison between making sure that the locals are getting what they need, the local politicians, the, everybody in the local arena to get what they need, but most of all the people. And I also want to be um, one that listens to the people, try to have regular town hall meetings, because if you don't meet with the people, then you don't know what they really want and what they really need. So at least put it out there, whether they show up or not, but at least put it on your end to make sure you make that available to them. And I want to be someone that's very accessible to people at any time that they need me, but most of all, I don't want to be just a reactive type person. I don't want to be an inactive person. I want to be what we should be, and that's proactive. Thank you, Dexter Sharp. Thank you, Dexter. Uh, we have a candidate in Senate District 8, uh, Bikram Mahanti, but Bikram isn't here, and I don't. Oh, Jarrell is going to represent Bikram? Yes. Okay, Jarrell. Come, come tell us about uh, Bikram. Uh, Bikram's here, been here other meetings. Um, you've, you've met him before, but Jarrell's going to fill us in. Afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, I'm Jarrell Anderson, campaign manager for Mr. Bikram Mohanty. Bikram had another event to attend tonight, so I'm here in his place. Uh, basically, uh, he's running for District 8 Senate position against uh, Tim Golden, who, you know, is the party switcher. Um, some of his uh, campaigns, or the platforms for the campaign exactly, would be designing a long-term scholarship, excuse me, long-term solution for the HOPE Scholarship, managing Medicaid spendings in Georgia, eliminating furlough days for our educators in the public school systems, ensuring farmers and those in the construction uh, industry sufficient laborers, and then holding legislators at the highest ethical standards. Uh, just uh, br briefly, uh, what the campaign is in need of now are volunteers, someone who is dedicated to uh, you know, getting Beacom elected into office. Again, uh, it takes funds to run a campaign, so we are accepting donations. I'll be here after the meeting tonight. Uh, if anyone wants to contribute, anyone wants to volunteer their time, uh, if you've done this before, uh, you can definitely help us out there. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Jarrell is getting a baptism into politics uh, all at once. He, he jumped in and, and appreciate, um, I appreciate all the volunteers. They, they really do a great job. Um, Chris Prine is our candidate for Sheriff, um, Sheriff Prine, come talk to us. I certainly thank you very much for allowing me to be here to talk with you tonight. Of course, uh, I'm not a party switcher. The Democratic Party put me in office. Thank you. Democratic Party put me in office, and uh, and I'm very appreciative of that that support. And I'm certainly looking forward to uh, your support this year, uh, this election year. Uh, I've worked hard to be the very best sheriff I could be. Uh, I've put in 12 to 14 hours a day because it's a full-time job. Uh, I enjoy what I do. I've been in law enforcement for uh, right at uh, 40 years, close to it. And uh, like I say, I, I really enjoy what I'm doing, and, and uh, I'm very supportive of the Democratic Party. And uh, hopefully I'll be with you in the next four years. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, so um, Marinelle Robertson is running for tax commissioner. She's running unopposed. Uh, Marinelle is a long-time, long-serving, faithful Democrat. She has neither primary competition nor uh, Republican competition, so she's, she's always on the campaign trail, though. But she's not here tonight. Um, for the coroner's position, we have two Democratic candidates, of which I think only one is here tonight, but uh, Bill Watson, the current coroner, is uh, a candidate, and Chris Gay is his opponent, so Mr. Gay. Hello. When I qualified for the coroner's office recently, Dr. Marks invited me to be here. You didn't tell me I was going to be up here making a speech. <laughs> I even spoke with him earlier today, and he still didn't say anything about it. So I am very unprepared. I will tell you a little bit about myself. I'm 51 years old. I was born and raised right here in Lowndes County. Started out in Hayhira, uh, born at Hayhira Smith Hospital up there. And uh, I went into law enforcement when I was about 25 years old. And my first job was, I was going to say with the Hayhire Police Department, but actually back then I was the Hayhire Police Department. There wasn't, there wasn't many people there at that time. I moved on and went to the Valdosta Police Department, stayed there seven years. And then I continued and got on with the Georgia State Patrol. That was my goal at that time. And uh, I got on the State Patrol, became a state trooper. I worked for this mean fellow over here for, I mean, this nice gentleman, the sheriff here for quite a while while I was with the State Patrol. Learned a lot from him. I've always uh, thought of Chris Prine as a man of high morals and high character, and I'm just thrilled that he's our sheriff here in Lowndes County. I retired from the State Patrol about two years 